96. The Doctrine of Grace. Calcedon Position Paper, number 159, January 1993. The doctrine of grace is so basic to the whole Bible that failure to understand and practice its meaning warps the whole life of Christianity. The meaning of grace in the Old Testament is that it is God's favour, entirely free and wholly undeserved, and that there is no obligation of any kind that God should be favourable to his people. The doctrine is covenantal and the establishment of the covenant itself was due in the first place to God's favour, undeserved and unconditioned. Alan Richardson, A Theological Word Book of the Bible, page 101 following. In the New Testament, the Greek word translated into English as grace is charis. And this word charis is the root of our English word charity. This tells us at once what grace means. It is God's act of charity to us, in and through Jesus Christ and his atonement. Grace is God's sovereign and free act, his charitable act, and man therefore contributes nothing to his salvation. As Otto Scott has observed, God doesn't need the church to save men. That God uses the church is also his act of grace. And a church which arrogates undue powers to itself forfeits God's grace and mercy. Once we recognize that our salvation, God's grace, is his act of charity to us, we begin to understand what a life of grace, and in a state of grace, means. It is a life of charity, of sharing our gifts and blessings with others. When our Lord sent out his disciples to preach and to be a healing and giving ministry, he said, Freely ye have received, freely give. Matthew chapter 10 verse 8 At times the medieval church understood this clearly. So too did John Calvin, St. Charles Borromeo, and many more since, such as Thomas Chalmers. The redeemed, those who have received God's charity, pass on the grace given to them in all forms of charity to others. These acts of charity begin with the gospel and they continue with every kind of effort to minister to the whole life of man. This is why schools, hospitals, homes for the aged and homeless, orphanages, homes for unwed mothers, rescue missions, study centres and much more are all parts of the Christian ministry. Freely you have received freely give. Giving to all these ministries is an aspect of the life of grace. Having received God's charity to the fullest measure, we also give in full measure. We may know about grace and do nothing. When we have received it, we act. This tells us why ours is a graceless age. Charity today is an act of state its central business, in fact. What the state gives, however, is not truly charity, but an instrument of power. From the days of imperial Rome to the present, quote, charity, end quote, or welfareism, has been a key means of increasing taxation and controlling the people. It has also been a very effective instrument in undermining the church and Christian charity. The state, not the church, is now the patron of the arts, and not surprisingly, the arts have become largely anti-Christian. The state has seized the areas of grace, of charity, and it now controls them. Not surprisingly, although from 1969 to 1989, the number of Bible-believing Christians in the United States, aged 18 and over, increased from 40 million to 91 million, their effectiveness declined, while statism prospered. If the evangelical churches had gained as much grace as they gained numbers, the situation would be radically different. Grace, like a fire, grows and grows. Too often today, church people find charitable activities disruptive of their lives, 
They find that such work puts them into contact with harsh realities when they want comfortable tasks that give them a glow of self-satisfied well-being. We all prefer to be comfortable sinners rather than hard-working and disturbed saints. But the Lord will not long endure our love of creaturely comforts over the duties of grace receivers. Freely ye have received, freely give. If the church people of the United States did no more than tithe and give a tithe of a tithe of their time to the ministries of grace, it would not take long to eliminate statism, socialism, and a variety of problems facing our society. Why do the churches and their members fail to respond? The problem is that people want salvation more than grace, as though the two could be separated. For them, salvation means escaping hell and gaining heaven. It means saying yes to Jesus, as though the initiative were in man's hands. Grace means that we, who deserve nothing from the hand of God, receive his charity, our salvation, and that grace in us cannot rest but must reach out to others in one way or another. Grace provides the God-ordained dynamics of history. It comes to us from heaven, and it courses through us into the world. It does not miss our pocketbook. Freely ye have received, freely give. Grace is a supernatural fact. It is God's mercy in us, and it grows in its momentum when it is manifested in our daily lives. God's charity is not a static thing, but a dynamic fact that radically alters all whom it touches. It gives men no humanistic peace nor comfort, but rather compels them by God's Spirit to be more than men chose to be, their own captains and controllers. Grace in history creates changes like an overwhelming flood in that it sweeps away an old order to create a great new one. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 Freely ye have received, freely give.